Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Let's Play DMC Double May Cry Virgil's Downfall. Uh, today we're going to be using the classic skin for Virgil just to give us a little bit of contrast and a break from the style that we've seen from him all game. Also, we picked up uh, Judgment Cut. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of level 1 of Judgment Cut. We'll be upgrading that later on, hopefully if I remember to grind out a couple of extra upgrade points, but it's worth showing off. Who are you? You failed. Your father gave you everything. And now you have nothing. Everyone you care about, everyone you love, has turned their back on you. How does it feel? My heart. You can't change the past. What would you do if you had another chance? Virgil? Virgil. Cat, you're still alive. Cat was useful. Useful? Cat saved my life. Virgil, please. Stay out of this! And so we go from Virgil's very bad hair day in the in the animatic cutscenes uh, to him just being slick. Uh, it's data slick. We now have access to the angel mode for Yamato. Uh, just a, a bunch of extra movesets using the same modifier uh, as the base game. The left and the right triggers for angel and devil mode respectively. Ah, that sent him over the edge before the uh, the vortex of the judgment could could actually catch up. Let's see, uh, we'll see that plenty more. And as usual, Angel is where I think this game really shines. Angel mode or the angel weapons, what have you. I think they are so fast and so flashy. They fit with the game style so well. Uh, so I really like that by mission two, we have the angel stuff unlocked, uh, rapid slashes, flush, all of that. It increases the pace of combat and the fluidity of it so much, and that's what I always like about the angel stuff. There we go, that's a nice judgment cut. At least level one. By the time we fully upgrade that, it gets really, really fun to use. I'm not sure how I feel about this costume. His face looks a little bit derpy in this art style. I actually really like classic Dante in this art style, but I, I don't know how I feel about classic Virgil. Also, with the hair down? The mop top? I don't know, his his uh, DMC outfit is kind of growing on me. Especially when you have, uh, when you actually see him in Limbo this often and you get the contrast of the blue on black. It's, it's harder to see in the base game most of the time, uh, because usually when you're seeing Virgil, it's in the real world instead of Limbo, and the color is really washed out. I think in Virgil's downfall, I like that costume better. Uh, also, I hate fighting these things uh, in Virgil's downfall. Bathos is they're the only enemies I really just don't see any point to. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I'm glad they give us this before they give us uh, the devil mode uh, abilities. There is really only one thing with the right trigger that I actually like, and that's going to be Killer B coming up later. Ah, oh, but they, they uh, lack some of the other notable Beowulf movesets. Aside from Killer B. 
so the reason that I have heard for why this is so different with, with regards to the presentation of cutscenes uh, is because they didn't have a large motion capture team to fully animate those cutscenes. So they went for a more budget-friendly, stylized approach. Uh, and I personally really like it. I've always said that constraint breeds creativity, and that shows here, especially. And this is where the path forks. Uh, I've taken the right path before. Oh, Rising Star, that's the one. That's, uh, we have a similar thing with Osiris. Where it's a large crowd control launcher. Uh, I've taken the right path. I don't know what lies along the left or if they just converge like certain parts of the base game when, it, when uh, the level kind of forks around. But eventually it just kind of crosses back on itself. Oh no, there is some unique stuff along this path. I wonder if you're meant to go along both of them to get all the collectibles. Uh, we still have these, the angel boosters. Just looking around, making sure I'm not missing too, too much. I hear a lost soul. Where is that at? Because the atmosphere is a little bit quieter, uh, and like I said before, the soundscape is less busy, you can hear those audio cues a little bit better. It's really hard to hear the lost souls in the base game, but they are there. They do emit a sound cue. Ah, oh, hey! Oh, why am I forgetting your Ravagers? Yeah, this is our first look at those. Uh, I can't remember if there is a way to take them out of the Berserker state uh, as Virgil. I'm, I'm, in general, much less familiar uh, with the specifics of Virgil and his campaign uh, than I am with base game. Oh, that's so nice. And that's so good, the way they set him apart from Dante. Uh, his moves are a lot more... Constrained, they're a lot more deliberate. They aren't these huge, uh, unnecessarily flashy strikes. They're like, there's an economy to his movement. And then you get all the teleporting, the way he dashes around. Ah, uh, it's fantastic. Oops, fell right into that. At least I caught Ravager. Just go over to him. Hopefully finish him off before he gets a chance to do anything else. Yeah, it works. Works well enough. But yeah, like the enemy specific counters, uh, I don't know him as well as I do uh, for Dante. It's a consequence of having way less time with this. Ah, I got all three of them. That's wonderful. Hit him with a flush on the way down. Uh, I really... Whoop. Really don't want to get caught by that. And then he gets access to similar abilities, but with his own flavor. And if they can't give him entirely unique subsystems, that's still the next best thing, is to make sure they get the, the flavor and the feel right. To set him apart, to make him distinct. Yeah, from the back, I really like this costume. I think it's just the face. The face that looks a little bit weird in this art style. Oh, the blue on red is fantastic, though. It's cool how they set that up for later. More of these shitty bathoses. Bathos and pathoses. <laughs> they don't stay alive long enough to do anything with them, and they really just... I, I, I don't know what they add to any of these fights. That, that's... one thing that I should have paid attention to. Also, answer my question just a little bit. They give you just one little extra small thing to, uh, to focus on. Plus, it's not like parrying them. 
confused and fun, and since we don't have uh, the really easy mode parries of Osiris' prop shredder, uh, it means that we almost exclusively have to time it out manually and do it the hard way, which is fun. Let's glide back onto that platform, it's ever shrinking, until it's just this small circle in the middle. I thought their lunges had a little bit more range, but maybe that's only near the end of their health bar. Okay, we need you to do something. We need you to get down here, preferably, because I don't really want to try fighting him in the air like that. Because I know as soon as I'm up there and I start a combo, he's just going to come down. And we'll dash through here. Now, before we move... Oh, I don't have anything. Ah, I thought I would have gotten one point by the end of that. I think that means that by the end of this... Whoops! Didn't see that until it was too late. I should have two upgrades by the end of this. I think that the... The... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I guess the girth of, of, of movesets... Uh, is a consequence of the, the length of this DLC. It's not particularly long, which means you don't have tons of opportunities to get a lot of skill points, which means they consequently can't give huge, huge movesets and tons of weapons to you. Because there's just not enough time to really substantially upgrade any of them, which doesn't feel as fun. Uh, that being said, I think they also could have just increased the rate at which you get those upgrade points from your red orbs. But it is what it is. You still get, uh, a whole weapon's worth of movesets from Angel Mode, one from Demon Mode, and the standard, uh, moveset. Did that do it? Hell yeah. Always love ending it on the last hit like that of enemies just dying to random things like a ra oh a random summon sword dude that's the best I need to put another point into that it's like one of my go-to's that was a really nice lucky parry oh and rapid slash into that oh you can just move around with so much freedom I think that's one of the key differences is that freedom of movement. Which is saying something given that we had access to the, the whips and whatnot in the base game, but you just have so many more movement options. So many more ways to get around quickly. And just be everywhere at once it feels like to be ubiquitous uh, on the battlefield. Got one more wisp. Oh, we got one more Wisp and a couple of Ravagers, actually. Oh, this is such a fun combination of enemies. Because they all have access to a trigger and they're all staggering when they do it. And they cover different spaces on screen. Ooh, this is really fun, actually. Forgot about this fight. Okay, we need to take care of you. And that... Oh, no, if that had launched... I would have been satisfied. Yeah, we're not letting him fall off the stage. We'll fall off instead, just to get that hit. I'm not sure when the Wisp died. Cat, are you okay? I'm fine, <laughs> but you're dead. It's funny you had to die to understand humanity. I rescued you from demons, remember? It gave you a home, a reason to live. No, you used me and you betrayed me. Everything you hate me for, it had to be done. Really? You deceived us, Virgil. Me, 
and your brother. Dante, now that's a real man. You're weak, almost pitiful. You'll never be half the man he is. Thank you all for watching. I think you all know it's coming next time. We're going to expand that moveset once again. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.